Back on our screens this week is everyone's favourite superhero billionaire that isn't Batman. I'm of course talking Iron Man. Now, I know it's just a film, but could Iron Man be real? Well, the thing that makes Iron Man Iron Man is his power armour, or exoskeleton as it's known. That's what lets him fight all the bad guys like the Mandarin, played by Sir Ben Kingsley in the new film with a really weird accent. Check the trailer, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, if you had your own power armour, what would you do with it? Would you be a villain or a good guy like Iron Man or put it to some other use? Let us know in the comments because a bit later I'm going to tell you some real world applications. Back to the film though. Now, what is Iron Man actually made of? You might be thinking, well, it's obvious, it's iron, because it's in his name, right? Well, you'd be wrong, I'm afraid. Even in the first film, they realised that iron would be rubbish, because it's not very strong, it's really heavy, and, of course, it also rusts, which isn't a good look. So what would Iron Man be made of if it's not iron? Well, I reckon it would be some sort of alloy, that's a combination of metals that can end up having very different properties from the ones that you put in. Nickel titanium would be a good bet, otherwise known as nitinol, because it's light, it's strong, it's resistant to heat, and it can also heal sort of. Uh, when you heat up nitinol above its transformation temperature, it can actually reform back into its original shape. That could be really handy for our Iron Man when he's trying to fix any battle damage taken to the suit. So we know what Iron Man is made of, but how do we put the power into power armour? Well, I can tell you straight away that the arc reactor and its fancy new element from the last film, if you remember. Yeah, that's complete sci-fi. We can't do that at all. In fact, current designers of real-world exoskeletons are finding power a bit of a problem. You see, the internal combustion engine, like in your car, that's a bit fuel-hungry. It's not very efficient. Batteries are better in that regard, except they take ages to recharge, which wouldn't be great if you find yourself in a fight. And then you've also got electrochemical fuel cells, which are fantastic, except they usually need temperatures above 600 degrees C, which is a bit warm for my liking. So if we want a real-life Iron Man, we probably need to come up with better power supplies. Now, Iron Man's suit actually provides his strength as well, and we've got two options for that, really. Uh, hydraulics, of course, are extremely powerful, but they're also very precise, and that's something we really need, because remember, we're inside this thing. We don't want our limbs flying all over the place and uh, breaking our bones. But I actually reckon the way to go would be electro-servo motors because they're light uh, and they're about as powerful. In fact, real-life exoskeletons right now can increase your strength up to 10 times. I think that's within Iron Man territory, so we're certainly safe on that bet. Add some fancy weaponry and uh, we've basically got ourselves an Iron Man. Be it one that can't fly and will only work for a couple of hours, but an Iron Man nonetheless. Now, I asked you guys what you would do if you had your own power armour. And actually, there are real-world power armours out there, and they've been used for some surprising uses. Now, the obvious one is military applications. You can have your soldiers carrying loads of equipment, heavy weaponry, and still being able to run around on the battlefield. But you can also use them in hospitals. Think about nurses picking up patients who can't get up themselves out of their beds, or even help to rehabilitate patients of spinal cord injuries and strokes. Did anyone think of that? I know I didn't. If you want to try out one of these current real-world power armors, your best bet is to pop over to Japan, hand over £1,300, and you can hire a HAL suit. Now, this one is pretty clever. The way it works is it detects the nerve signals sent from your brain to your muscles just by sensors on the skin, and then the suit will react accordingly. And this HAL suit is in fact the only current exoskeleton that has a safety rating, and it only got it in February. That really gives you an idea that these things can potentially be very dangerous, and that's why I'm going to give it a miss. And the other reason why I'm going to give it a miss is it's made by Cyberdyne, and I don't want to get turned into a Terminator. I'll be back. If your head's not fully squozen by now, you can check out more of our videos by subscribing here for free.